It's Tuesday afternoon action from Buffalo, New York, as two of the top teams in the conference kick off the final week of the regular season. It's the UB Bulls and the Akron Zips. Hi, everybody. Welcome inside Alumni Arena. I'm Paul Peck with Matt Mattia. These are two of the top teams in the MAC. They like to run and gun. They like to score. They know they're both going to Cleveland. What they don't know yet is who they're playing and where they're going to be seated. Well, the nice thing about Buffalo's schedule is they hold their own destiny. They've got two important games, of course, starting this afternoon against Akron. As you take a look at these standings, then they wrap their season up this weekend against Kent State. So to make it simple, Buffalo wins both games. They can jump to the two. Kent State and Ohio not in action today as that game was paused, which is just going to make things even a little more confusing. But at least for UB, win the next two, and they can get as high as the number two seed. And Akron has a chance by winning their last two and having some breaks come their way of at least tying for the MAC regular season championship. Here are your starting lineups. For the Akron Zips, led by the MAC's number one scorer and maybe most dynamic player, that's Lauren Christian Jackson, joined by Daly. Trimble's one of the MAC's top three-point shooters, Ali at the wing position, and Freeman, who's one of the MAC's top rebounders. On the Buffalo side, their starting lineup brought to you by the UB Alumni Association. Be a part of your alumni-powered network of more than 273,000 worldwide. Visit buffalo.edu slash alumni. Javon Graves, Ronaldo Segu, Laquil Harden at the Bulls are 6-1 and one in the last seven games since he's been in the starting lineup. Jonathan Williams, their top scorer, and Josh Mbala, one of the nations, and the Max top rebounders. This should be a fun game, Matt. Both these teams are similar, like to do a lot of the same things. But as John Gross told us, this one may come down to who is better on the glass. Well, we know both these teams can score it at a really high clip. Paul said it. Lauren Christian Jackson, probably the most dynamic scorer in the MAC, maybe one of the most in America. And then you got Buffalo's offense, who's an absolute wagon, as we know. The Zips, however, are going to have to shore up their defense. They've struggled the last two games, and they're going to have to be really good on the glass against the nation top rebounding team in Buffalo. This is going to be a lot of fun, Paul. It's afternoon basketball in Buffalo, and we've got the tip-off between the Zips and the Bulls coming up next on ESPN3. We are ready to go here in Buffalo, New York. Thanks for joining us on a Tuesday afternoon. That used to sound weird. It's not quite as weird as it used to be because there's more people probably at home yeah. doing a little work, watching a little basketball. Yeah, you know, weird is, is sort of an objective term now because all of a sudden the weird has become normal oh, in 2021, yeah. especially with this COVID year of basketball. Well, what's not weird is what's been going on with these two teams lately. Maybe a little weird if you're an Akron fan because they've dropped two in a row and they've allowed 90 and 83 points in those two two losses. John Gross says they have to be better on defense. Buffalo's won three in a row, six of their last seven. In those last three wins, averaging 91 points per game. There's John Gross, the veteran coach, not only from here in Akron, who previous stint said Ohio. He knows the Mac. But what he doesn't know since he's been the Akron head coach is how to beat Buffalo just one and yeah. six against the Bulls since he returned to the conference. That one win came here last year. So John Gross, guy, he looking, he's looking happy. He's looking fired up for a Tuesday afternoon basketball. Why not? You know, he's he was a lot of fun to talk to, and you and I had a chance to, to speak with him on the phone yesterday. 24 years in coaching, 19 times he's been to the, the postseason, including a Sweet 16 run with Ohio. So as Paul said, he knows how to win in the MAC. He has yet to figure out how to crack the code of Buffalo, but you know the Zips are coming to town today with their A game. 26th year in coaching for Jim White, so second year as the Bulls head coach. Here we go. It's the Zips in the... Gold and blue shiny uniforms. They are sharp looking here today. The Bulls and the home whites. This one should be fun. Buffalo and Akron, two of the top teams in the MAC. And there's Lauren Christian Jackson, number one. He is number one in a lot of categories, and he's the number one guy we're all watching here today. Off the miss by Trimble, it's Buffalo with the rebound. Akron went hard after that rebound. John Gross said they have to be excellent on the glass if they want to beat Buffalo. Laquil Hardnett, who has been a real spark plug for the Bulls since entering the starting lineup, gets the ball down low and draws the first foul of the game. That will go on Enrique Freeman, Bill Elk, Greg Landsdorf, and Michael Griffith are officials today. Laquil Hardnett, I think uh, spark plug is maybe even an understatement for what he has been to this Buffalo team. How about these for numbers? We talked about it last game. They only got better 
uh, over the last couple of games for LaQuil. 23 for 24 in his last 24 shots. 96% from the field. He hasn't missed since February 12th. And they're not all layups. He's got three three-pointers in that mix there as well, too. But he's shooting 76% on the season. Crazy. We'll get to someone on Akron has also got some eye-popping numbers as this game moves on. We'll get to him. Well, I think the interesting thing that we're going to be watching is what are the Bulls going to do defensively to try to not stop but slow down Lauren Christian Jackson, the max number one scorer. Right now you got Rondo Segu on a man-to-man. -man. And that's why it's a problem. I'll tell you what, Paul, if you know how to stop him or slow him down, I think you should get down to the sideline right there and sit along with the Buffalo coaches because no one has been able to figure out how to slow down this kid. Yeah, and even if you extend your defense or double team him, he just takes another step farther back and hits threes. Swatted from the middle of the paint, but back to Buffalo, and they get it to their big guy, Josh Mbala, and he'll draw a foul. All right, a couple of easy trips here for Buffalo. They get it into the paint. They're very, very deliberate so far, uh, getting it down low. First to Hardnett, now to Mbala. No outside shots yet from Buffalo. They are going to pound it down low, and both of their big fellas here to the free throw line early. And very key, that's two early fouls on Enrique Freeman. He is a key guy, particularly in trying to balance out Buffalo's number one in the country rebounding effort. Freeman comes in as the leading rebounder on the Zips and number two in the conference. Yeah, he was who I was alluding to a few moments ago. Number one in the MAC in field goal percentage, 75% from the floor. 36 blocks as well, Paul, which is number one in the match. So that's a huge blow to Akron here, not even two minutes into this game. So he's out. Cameron Reese, number five, will come in for him, but that is certainly something to watch. Jackson finds an opening. That one way off, an uncharacteristic air ball, but saved by the Zips into the hands of Trimble Jr. Shot clock under 10. A little bit of a mismatch. Hardnet's on him, trying to find a room off the switch. Shot clock at two at one, and that did not get off in time. Did not come close anyway. Good defense by the Bulls. Well, nothing new. Buffalo bringing the energy not only on the defensive side, but on the bench. As you can see at the top of your screen there, people at home, they are jumping up out of their feet. Hardly anyone sitting, and they create their own energy from the sideline. And that bench energy has really helped the last four or five home games here for Buffalo. Those bench guys have made it a point to give, bring us some atmosphere to what we're unfortunately been used to, not having much atmosphere at any home arena. Sagu on the runner, no good. Offensive board for Mbala. Another offensive board. Graves kicks it back out for Hardnet. LaQuill into the lane, a little out of control, but he'll hang. Can't hit again. Nearly another offensive rebound, but finally Reese says enough of that. That's the first miss in quite some time for LaQuill Hardnet. Just his second miss out of his last 24 shots. Trimble Jr. into the lane. Floater no good. Rebounded by Williams. How about the energy so far, Paul? You can just feel it between these two squads here early on. Sometimes these afternoon games, I think the guys, are they get up and go play. Oh, yeah, a little juiced up. Mbala with the free throw line jumper miss. And here come the Bulls on the run. Hard net, Mbala, alley -oop. Williams, low block, layup no good, out of bounds to Akron, and the Bulls have yet to hit a field goal in this game now. 0 oh, for 6. Yeah, you know, maybe that energy a little bit too much, a little too high. It seems to be a little uh, out of control here on the offensive end. But, you know, it's going to settle down offensively, I think, for UB. I, I like that they're bringing the energy. Akron doing a great job on the defensive end. This is as good as we thought here through the first few minutes. And it's a Buffalo team that shoots 47% as a team. That's a great number. Nice pass from Christian Jackson to the cutting Cameron Reese. And that's why Lauren Christian Jackson leads the MAC or correction, number two in the MAC and assists. Yeah, number two in assists per game and number two in total assists. He's the complete package. He is not just a scorer. He's the only player in the country in the top 11 in both scoring and assists. Hard net. That's two misses in a row. What is going on? <laughs> it's a wacky game here today. And once again, the Bulls have yet to hit a field goal. Jackson with the miss. Rebounded by Graves on the break. Graves up the right side. Kicks it back. Williams for three, no good. Offensive board for Mbala, and he goes right to it. Wanted a foul, didn't get one. Shadow, 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 
We got two players trying to chase down Lauren Christian Jackson. He just flung it up on the reverse attempt. No good. Kick it out, Williams, into the lane, 14-footer. That is no good. The Bulls now 0 for 9. Yet, they only trail by one. Stolen away. Here's Hardnett leading the break. Hardnett kicks it for Sagu. Offensive foul. Yep, I saw that coming a mile away. That was read really well by Lauren Christian Jackson. So it's a 5-4 game. We figured it would be 25-24 by now. But both teams struggle a little bit, except when you get easy dunks like that. Uh, um, uh, what the heck's going on here? <laughs> you know, it just seems to be a little bit out of control early on here. I think both <laughs> these teams know it's... two for 16 yeah, shooting. You know, they know what's on the line. It's an afternoon game, two heavyweights in the Mid-American Conference. Something's a little off here. This, uh, the pace is a little bit too fast, I think. Uh, both of these squads, really, uh, especially Buffalo at 0 for 9, but both these squads need to take a big, deep breath here after this media timeout and uh, and settle in. You know, and it's it, it's just the craziness of what basketball is because when the Bulls played at Ohio on Saturday, they came out and hit everything mm -hmm. in the first 10 minutes and essentially ran the Bobcats out of the gym, uh, built the big lead because they couldn't miss and here they can't make anything it's just a crazy sport sometimes and give credit to Akron's defense too is playing a role in that as well too so is Buffalo's because the Zips aren't doing a whole lot on their own either and and again points in the paint such a big part of what Buffalo wants to do offensively they've gotten a few chances Matt but yep. they haven't converted on it. yeah good interior defense from Akron and that's without Enrique Freeman who's been on the bench with two fouls so nice job here by the Akron Bigs there's another one just clogging the paint forced pass by Graves looking for Bertram broken up and stolen away up and under move is blocked by Bertram Reese tried to take him to the rack didn't happen Graves, quick first step, bounce pass, and the slam bala ends the offer for the Bulls. Yeah, that's a pretty high percentage shot right there. Well, you get your first field goal and take a one-point lead. Who would have thought that would be the case? Yeah, <laughs> pretty amazing, isn't it? Lauren Christian Jackson cuts into the lane, kicks it outside, and that three is way off. That was Greg Tribble, who's now just one of 15 on the season shooting threes. Nice yeah. feed from Graves Tembala. Yeah, that's one of those you just kind of get out of the way if you're Akron. He beat you to the basket. He's in the restricted area when he takes off. There is no defending that two-hand slam for the junior from Bordeaux, France. Did I hear that right? That Freeman just checked he back is. in? Yep. Look at that. Right there at the top of the key. That's a calculated risk there by Coach John Gross. He's going to have to be real careful. Loose ball. Bertram couldn't hang on to it. We get a jump ball. It will stay with the Bulls. The big senior, Brock Bertram, getting a little early playing time here. So Akron's one of their last eight shots. They have a three-minute scoring drought. Buffalo just ended their three-and-a-half-minute scoring drought. Knocked away. Good steal by Jackson. Will he take it all the way himself? Up and under move. And it was affected enough by Bertram to miss. But a good rebound and a putback and one for Enrique Freeman. Well, that's a, a risk that pays off immediately by Akron to put one of their star bigs in with those two fouls. Christian Jackson runs the floor. He commands all the attention in transition. And that allows Freeman to get down in there with Mbala, grab the O board, and there's the old-fashioned three-point play opportunity. First foul of the game on Josh Mbala. And Enrique Freeman, who's already got the two, comes in and completes the three-point play. The sophomore from Cleveland, one of the great stories in the Mid-American Conference, Enrique Freeman. Yeah, really is. He, he came to Akron, uh, decided that he wanted to try out for this basketball team. He played a little bit of high school hoops. He essentially uh, walked onto the team. 
Didn't play a whole heck of a lot. He ended up, uh, I believe, when you look at Seven it here, just five year. total points yep. last year. Uh, with COVID hitting, he was able to stick around. He put on weight. He changed his diet. He put about 20 good pounds on coming into this year. So you're talking about a walk-on who scored five points last year. He's averaging eight points and shooting 75% from the floor. You just don't see that these days. Uh, walk-ons showing up in the tryout and doing as good as he is. Williams has the shot block. This is a great shot blocking team for the Zips, and they've already shown that here today. Jackson, bounce pass to Freeman, kick ball first. And you get a look at Freeman there. I mean, you see walk-ons getting put on teams well, like that. No, but one real quick note, he came to Akron on an academic scholarship, right. and I believe remains on that yep. academic scholarship, Smart not kid. an athletic. There you saw the kick by Bertram. It's just a, it's a really cool story to see that. You heard John Gross say it when we talked to him. You see these walk-ons make rosters, maybe even eventually earn a scholarship later in their career. But for one year to turn it around like he has to earn a full, or excuse me, athletic scholarship, it's just it's really really cool story. Good for him. Yeah, t terrific, excellent story. Loop it inside for Freeman. Now he'll kick it back out. Bulls are really quick out there, and that's why they're one of the best three-point defending teams in the country. That's okay. going to count, and a foul. Well then, that's Michael Dawson. Seen some uh, some open looks and some takes around the basket. Not fall, but you're telling me this one goes down? I mean, Brock gets gets uh, Dawson right on the arm, and he still knocks it down. That's a couple of and ones in a row now for Akron. Yep. Michael Dawson, sophomore from Huntington, West Virginia. Matt, as voice of the UB women's basketball team, you would know his sister Jordan rather well. Mm -hmm. She's one of the standout players in the Akron, Akron. women's basketball team. Yeah, she's given Buffalo some, some tough games over the season. She's one of the best players for the Zips. So a couple of those three-point plays have now triggered this 6-0 Akron run to the biggest lead of the game at five points. Bet you there are some good one-on-one -on -one games in the Dawson household I growing bet. up. West Virginia. And a lazy pass by Jonathan Williams is picked off by the Zips. And a block from behind prevents the basket for Garvin Clark. Back the other way come the Bulls. And Williams, will he make up for it? Still battling. It's Nickelberry who gets it into the lane for Fagan. And now a reset. The pace has just been unbelievable. You have hardly seen a half-court offense from Buffalo here so Too far today. Too much, though, I yeah, think. Yeah, agreed. It hasn't been working. It's one thing when transition offense is working, and it is not today. Shot clock at three, shot clock at two. Sagu had it blocked. That's three blocks already early in the game for the Akron Zips. It's right about their season per game average. Loop it into the corner, three-pointer. No good. Rebounded by Buffalo off the miss from Win. Look at Sagu with the Jets into the front court. Fagan's three, no good. Put back. Bertram will roll in. Well, we knew Buffalo's offense likes to go quick, right? They're the seventh uh, and shortest average possession length in America. They only average about 14 and a half seconds before putting a shot up, and I think it's about six seconds here today. They have been quick offensively. Bulls still just two of 15 shooting, but only down by three. And they'll stay down by three. Off the miss from win. Williams, Sagu. Boy, Akron's quick out to defend the threes as well, too. Sagu short on the reverse layup, rebounded by Clark. But no stoppages in play here. Coach Weitzel's been trying to get three of his starters back in, and he can't get a whistle. Off the three-point miss, Fagan, bounce pass stolen away by Garvin Clark. Got a little noise going on, I want you to everybody to hear it. Yeah, it's good to just, you know, hear the, the energy in here. You can, you can feel it between these two teams, how, how much both of them want this one. Clark into the lane for the floater that falls in. Freshman Garvin Clark. I mean, look at the sideline right now. There's like 15 people trying to check into this game, and we haven't gotten a whistle. I love it. I love this pace. You know, sometimes you see in college basketball, it's just riddled with whistles. You can't really get a feel for it, and that has not been the case here today. Sagu oh. kind of flung that up from behind his head. It goes off glass and in. 
Nothing's been easy. I tell you, credit nope. to Akron. That every bucket Buffalo's had to earn has, has been tough because the Zips are playing good D. Just Buffalo's third field goal of the first 10 minutes. And again, a bounce pass that will not connect as it hits off the leg of Bertram. We're going to take a break and take a breath, get some of those substitutions in. It's been an odd start to this one. Two of these high-scoring top teams have not quite played like that yet. But stick around. It's going to get better. I know it. Well, the Bulls have only hit three baskets in this game. A dunk, a putback, and this. I, this is about as tough as it gets. I mean, Segu's weight is falling away from the basket. Right over the outstretched arms of Michael Wynn and just gets the friendly roll off the glass. And maybe that, hopefully, for Buffalo fans will jumpstart what has been otherwise sort of a, an out-of-control offense here thus far. Yeah, un certainly uncharacteristic for the way the Bulls have been playing lately. They've hit just three of 17 shots, 0 of 3 from three-point distance. They've turned the ball over six times right now. And uh, the only thing they're doing is out-rebounding sizably yep. the Akron Zips. And on the Akron side, they've only got one basket from Lauren Christian Jackson, and they've struggled to shoot as well, just one of eight from behind the arc. I will say, though, Buffalo has outscored their opponents in the paint over the last three games, 176 to 106. That is an enormous uh, advantage for Buffalo, but today it's 6 to 6. So Akron not only doing a good job scoring in the paint, but they're keeping Buffalo out of the paint, which is a key for beating UB. So the Zips, the, you know, the only thing that's kind of saved us from this rather ugly first 10 minutes is it's been equally ugly, and we've still got that's a good true. game here at just three points. And then there's a foul on the Bulls trying to guard Lauren Christian Jackson. That one will go on Javon Graves. Yeah, Lauren Christian Jackson, as I said, really the complete package. He, you know, you think a player at five foot eight, he's a three-point threat only, and that's just not the case. Christian Jackson is as deadly going to the basket as he is shooting from outside, and he is... And Josh Wetzel said this, the voice of the UB Bulls has been around a long time. He is the fastest and quickest player he has ever seen in his over 12 years of doing this. Yeah, he, he is fun to watch. And, and I'm no, I know before the afternoon is out, there's going to be some validation for us saying that just because he's that good. And what he's doing at his size and only 5'8 is amazing. And again, loose ball and nearly stolen away, but a nice save by Michael Wynn and a missed dunk by Reese. Yeah, this is wacky. <laughs> Whatever. I love it. <laughs> and oh, how about that? There's no missed dunk there. Javon Graves down the middle. That's up. Graves just took it right to the rack in about 0.3 seconds. John Gross just called timeout. And oh, look at the hang time from Javon Graves. Up and over the six foot seven Cameron Reese. How, how about that's one way to solve your shooting woes? Oh. Do that. Posters. That was a, a huge slam from Graves, the 6'3 senior out of Melbourne, Ohio. 11th in school history. Thanks to plays like that and scoring, he needs about 29 more points, Paul, to move up. I'm sure we'll get that over the next uh, today's game and maybe this weekend's game. So Javon Graves continuing to solidify himself as one of the all-time great scorers in a Buffalo uniform. 1,358 career points. Been a great career for Javon Graves, who comes from yep. just outside of Akron, Ohio, Malvern, Ohio, and played at Akron's famed St. Vincent St. Mary's High School. Yep. Of course, as everyone knows that, LeBron James is alma mater. And uh, LBJ, a little connection with Akron, too. A, a sneaker deal, among other things, with uh, one of his hometown schools. I think the the shiny unis they're wearing today are part of the LeBron connection. There's a miss by Jackson. And Imbala takes the hip and goes to the ground, and that will be the foul on Trimble Jr. Yeah, Trimble Jr. was set and waiting. That was a great adjustment by Imbala. That could have easily been a charge if he decided to go through the chest, but you see that last, he kind of slid to his left, took it off the hip, made it a textbook block. That's a nice read from Imbala. Just the third team foul on the Zips here in this first half. Graves, skip pass, corner, Nickelberry, three good. 
big three, the first of the game from Buffalo. And David Nickelberry coming off of a career game against Ohio last time out where he was 7 of 8 with 16 points, which was a record for him. So he's picking up where he left off. That's good news for Buffalo. Yeah, they've gotten some nice bench uh, contributions from Nickelberry, Fagan, and Skogman off the bench for have the Bulls. I mean, yeah, when you beat Ohio by 20 plus, or 20 points rather, and you only get 10 points combined between Williams and Sagu, that just goes to show you how deep this UB team is. Nice feed to Tribble for the layup, and we're tied at 15. Nickelberry will try it from the other side and hit it. Knockdown. David Nickelberry's feeling himself, and the bench is loving it. First two threes of the game, as Matt pointed out, both from David Nickelberry. Jackson kind of got grabbed as he tried to go to the lane, so he dished it off, and he'll move it around, and that three will rim in and out. And here come the Bulls on the break. A miss by Trimble Jr. Graves for three, bullseye. Oh. That ball didn't touch the, the, the court for the last 65 feet of that break out there. Three passes right into the hands of Graves, and that is three triples in a row and a six-point lead for Buffalo. And how do you explain this? Now the Bulls have hit their last five baskets in a row. It's a 13-2 Buffalo run. And there's a foul on the Zips. Well, you knew a team that scores 82 points a game and leads the Mac in scoring was going to wake up sooner or later. Well, they certainly have a 13-2 run over the last three minutes thanks to the three-point shooting. We're finally getting kicked up here in Alumni Arena. We're back with more first half action on ESPN3. Well, there's only one other college basketball game going on anywhere in the nation, so we know the gang in Bristol got to be watching that as a Sports Center top 10 nominee. Uh, just the, the hang time that he gets. He's just six foot three. I mean, that's not short by any imagination, but to be able to hang, I mean, his head's up with the rim. Javon Graves never shies away from going to the rim like that, especially when he sees a lane to put someone on a poster. So the Bulls had only two field goals in roughly the first 10 minutes of this game. Now they've hit five in a row. It started with the circus shot from Sagu, that dunk, and then three straight three-pointers. Please try to explain this game to me sometime, Matt. I'm good, thanks. <laughs> Crazy. That's why we love it though, right? Absolutely. Because you never know what you're gonna see on no nope. good or bad sometimes. So the Bulls can add to this 13-2 run. Mbala on the low block, pump fake move, layup good. It's a really, really refined move out of Josh Mbala. He was really raw at Texas Tech, transferred into Buffalo. You knew the athletic ability was there, and you're really starting to see him. He's getting coached up well here at Buffalo, and look at him go. Mbala feeds hard net for another UD slam dunk. Well. This a is fun. 17 to 2 Woo. run ended finally by Lauren Christian Jackson. What a take by Christian Jackson too and that is what they call a silencer as Buffalo's bench was all fired up and Lauren Christian Jackson doing what he does best that is scoring the ball. And how about Javon Graves who knows how to score it off the spin move. Man, it, it somebody it somebody fired up the microwave here cuz yeah. we have heated up. Stolen away, here oh, comes the out. break, three on one. Mbala to Fagan, layup, good! Well, well, something that jumps out immediately is how effective the fast break has been now the last three or four possessions because early in that first five or six minutes, it was out of control, they weren't scoring, they were turning it over, charges, what have you. And after that first media timeout, it's like a different team in transition. They have been very efficient. It's a 21-4 Buffalo run right now and a chance to add to it off another turnover. Javon Graves just went Derek Jeter style flying into the stands there, saving that one. Watch the play, exactly what you're talking about, and any good baseball fan will know exactly what you meant. Look at this. Yeah, that's a good clean save. He got that, he went head first diving into the bench, but that earned him uh, his team another possession here. Bulls have hit their last nine shots in a row. 
And you know what? This guy with the basketball right now, Nickelberry, was kind of the guy that got it sparked off the bench. Yeah, Michael Dawson just played really good defense there because that ball was going up, I can tell you that. And Josh Mbala scraping the ceiling with that three-point attempt. No good. It's a run out for the Zips, and it's an easy layup for Macy Daly. That's not an easy pass, and Lauren Christian Jackson just made that look just casual how good that was. Excellent find. 10-point Buffalo lead. Graves, they clear it out for him, but we're going to get a push-off called on the Bulls. And it's going to go on Graves. Wasn't sure whether they were going to call Javon for that or not. Let's get a look here. It was a little crowded in the paint. That's a great angle. We'll see. He kind of leans in. Oh, yeah. boy. Yeah. Uh, you think? Yes. Uh, I, think I feel like I've seen that happen 50 right. times every game. 100%. It, it, my thing is with those calls, if you're going to call the first one, you better call them all. You know, when they start picking and choosing over those is, is when I get a little iffy. But we'll see. Uh, you know, a little bit of an extension. Not much, but... Quick move to the basket, and it opened up wide for Michael Wynn's first two of the day. The junior from Albany, New York, on the scoreboard. Hardnett thought about the long three. Instead, he'll create some contact. John Gross wanted the same call there. That didn't my problem. get it. Yep, that's my problem with it. You can't pick and choose when you're going to call it like that. Long three, off, offensive rebound, put back, no good. The original three missed by Dawson, the put back missed by Wynn. Post up move for Mbala, kicks it for Fagan, corner three, good. Trayvon Fagan has now hit nine three-pointers in the last seven games. He's been the Bulls' best shooter from distance. Knocked away and stolen. Here come the Bulls on the break. Sagu feeds. Nickelberry had it blocked, but the putback for Fagan. I tell you what, that's Enrique Freeman just went all out for a big block, but unfortunately for Akron fans, Buffalo still cleans it up. And the Bulls have found their groove Sparked by defense and lots of slam dunks. Buffalo up by 15. Now right in the middle there, Sierra Dillard, one of the all-time greats in UB women's basketball history. And tomorrow it'll be the final home game for the UB women as they take on Miami of Ohio, which will be senior day to honor Summer Hemphill and Hannah Hall. Yeah, pretty young team really for Buffalo, but two of the more meaningful seniors that they have had in a long time. Of course, Hannah Hall, uh, the, the, the point guard, the floor general. What a great story Hannah has and, and her uh, a fight to become one of the better guards for Buffalo. And, of course, Summer Hemphill, the, the hometown girl who has been nothing but dominant in her years, fighting through some injuries. She's just back now, getting a little more healthy for the women's team coming down the stretch. That's a big boost for Coach Jack and the Bulls. Lauren Christian Jackson into the lane, lost it, regained it. Shot clock under 10 now as Michael Wynn thinks about what he wants to do. Drive to the hoop will draw the foul for Michael Dawson. Watch this one again. David Nickelberry will draw the foul. Yeah, he got him pretty good there. Kinda so up through the chest area. So at one point this game was 11 to 6 Akron when these two teams were sort of slogging a little bit. Since then Buffalo has scored 30 of the last 40 points to build the lead that sits at 14 right now and will stay that way. It's a pretty crazy turnaround. Really, I mean, we were saying it. We knew soon enough uh, Buffalo's offense was going to wake up. I think soon enough Akron's offense is going to start scoring the ball here as well. I, I don't uh, imagine this stays like this for very long. I think the Zips are just too good and too well coached. Knocked away. Nearly closely stolen by Daly, but regained by Sagu. Shot clock at five. Rondo into the lane. Hangs. Can't hit. Rebound ripped down by Michael Wynn. And look at the Jets get turned on by Lauren Christian Jackson. So fun to watch. But good job by the Bulls to sort of shut off the trip to the basket and force a miss. Offensive rebound. 
Jackson will shoot it again. He doesn't miss nope. twice. No, he does not. Timeout, Coach Weitzel and the Bulls. Great effort by Akron on the offensive glass. And as Paul said, Lauren Christian Jackson, the preseason All-Mac first team, number one scorer in the conference, does not miss two open looks in a row. Last year's MAC Player of the Year. Good chance that he might do Hell that yeah. two years in a row. That hasn't happened a whole lot in the MAC. Back to back Player of the Year. He's going to have some competition from Mari and Jackson and Danny Pippen and a few other guys too. But uh, Lauren Christian Jackson, the senior from Chicago, number one in the MAC in scoring, number two in assists. I mean, just those names right there you listed, and this is sort of the sentiment that that Akron head coach John Gross was talking about. Shows you how good this conference is and how talented they are. It's not just I good teams. He mentioned Justin Turner. He did, Justin another Turner. Guy. Uh, he mentioned Janathan Williams, who's mm -hmm. more of a flex Josh player. And Josh, right. It's just, he, say, he named about 10 guys, and he said, any one of these, he goes, I've been there. I've been to the Power 5 programs. Any one of these guys could play on any team in America, and, and he's 100% right. Yeah, high praise from John Gross. That's, you know, it's, it's a great point. And anybody that watches Mac basketball, I don't think would quibble with any of that. Nope, nope. We uh, sometimes forget how lucky we are. Williams, tough drive to the hoop. Can't hit. Gets his own rebound. And can't put it in. Tap up no good. And finally, Akron brings it down. Now the Zips got a chance to get a little momentum of their mm -hmm. own going here. Yeah, a couple of stops in a row, and it starts on that end of the ball for Akron. Yep, final minutes or so of the first half. Been a weird first half. I think that's the best word I can come up with. Gotta get rid of that. Yes, he does. Baseline jumper. No good by Daly. And a foul on Akron. No shots coming for Buffalo. Just the fifth team foul. This has been a, a pretty cleanly played opening half of action here. So Buffalo's going to have to go the length of the floor with 70 seconds left and that 11-point lead. But as Paul just point, uh, pointed out here, you feel like maybe a little bit of momentum for Akron, especially if they can get another stop here. Javon Gray has been a big part of this turnaround in the first half for the Bulls. Jonathan Williams hasn't quite gotten going yet, but that's sometimes all it takes. And wow. one for the junior from Rochester, New York, Jonathan Williams. Do not sign me up to take a charge from Jonathan Williams. <laughs> I mean, look at this, just the athleticism. And I think the only reason that was a charge, or excuse me, a block rather, uh, was the restricted zone area underneath the cylinder there. You cannot be the one to take contact if you're the defender under that restricted zone because that would be uh, that would be unfair, obviously, advantage defensively. But what an excellent take from Williams. Yep, his first basket of the game after missing his first seven shots. And he can heat up quickly, and that may be the kind of basket he needs to get his confidence back. Not that he would have lost it very much, but... Three-point play completed for Jonathan Williams. Under a minute to go here in the first half. Buffalo up by 14. It's a big possession for Akron here, I think, if they can get a bucket and a stop. And Rondo Segu has made it hard on Lauren Christian Jackson, and there's a great example of it. He's been the primary guy guarding yep. Lauren Christian Jackson. He's done a nice job. It's no easy task. You're talking about a young man who has scored 30-plus points five times this year. Bulls are going to have to get a shot off here. Can't run out the clock. Williams will put up a three. Front rim no good. And now a chance for Akron to finish it off. Final seconds of half number one. Look at Sagu face guarding Jackson here, doing his best to prevent the ball to get to him. And they tried to feed it down low, can't do it. Out of bounds with .6 seconds to go. Macy Daly saw the opening and just couldn't connect on the pass. I like the idea. I think everybody on the court thought the ball was going to try to go to Jackson at some point. So I, I like the take from Daly there. He just kind of lost it going to the basket. All right, let's see what the Zips might have here for .6 seconds, right? You, you, you got to just oh. kind of tap it up, That's right? That's why they just checked Freeman back into the game at six foot seven. They're going to try to get something going to the basket, I think. Daly will trigger. Oh. Yeah, I think he kind of got, Trimble got it off, but didn't get a very good shot off. And a wild and up and down first half.
Buffalo finds its run in the second half. A big run that builds up a healthy 14-point lead. Halftime from the Bulls leading the Akron Zips 39 to 25. Matt, a 21 to 4 run, sort of the middle of that first half is what took Buffalo from really struggling. They had hit just two of their first 16 shots since then, 13 of 20. That goes hand in hand with the run that's built this lead. Yeah, you know, Akron's defense is sort of what dictates whether they win or not. I mean, they won 10 out of 11 games, and the defense was number one in the MAC in defensive efficiency. The last two games, not so much. And again, here today, it has struggled a little bit. And they're going to have to clean things up on the defensive end because for that last, as you pointed out, that last 10, 12 minutes or so, Buffalo did everything they wanted on the offensive end. Into the lane, Tribble can't get it to go. What the Bulls have done good defensively is limit Lauren Christian Jackson, only eight points. Now, he may still get his average of 21 before the day is over, but no one else has been a secondary scorer. Remember, their loss the other day uh, to Bowling Green, they only had Lauren Christian Jackson in double figures. So finding that number two score has been a bit of a challenge, and it certainly has he and after we watched Josh Mbala put it up and in, the other thing that jumped out at me, Matt, is Brian Trimble Jr., mm -hmm. second leading scorer, top six in the country in three-pointers made per game. No points, 0 of 5 shooting, 0 of 3 from beyond the arc. Yeah, I will interject here, but I don't think the pace of the game is going to let us catch up here for a second. But uh, as Graves takes it coast to coast, and, and as you see on your stats there, he's a 42% three-point shooter. On a three-game stretch just a few games ago, he was 14 of 25 from three-point land. Now, last game, just two for nine. Now, here today, scoreless. So, that's a really good observation, Paul, because Trimble Jr. is that secondary scoring option, and he has yet to show up today for Akron. And that three will not fall for Ali Ali as they continue to do the zips to struggle from beyond the arc. And Rondo Segu will draw the foul on the drive to the hoop. Bulls have the first quick four points of the half to build their biggest lead of the day. Well, if there wasn't a foul called here, we were about to have our third highlight dunk there. As you see, Segu getting pushed from behind. Watch the follow-up of, of Impala, though, who just cuffs that thing with ease. And it's just, it just, Buffalo seems to be playing with that swagger. They've got that energy right now about them uh, that I haven't seen from Akron here today yet. The Zips are, seem to be lacking in, in, in the, mo the momentum category here. Segu rolls in his third point of the day as Jim Weitzel looks on. Last three games for Buffalo, 102, 85, and 86 points, and that is the Bulls playing the game they like to play. Yep. A lot of guys on this team can score. It's not just your Williams, Mbala, Sagu, Graves. There's about eight, nine guys who are going to score consistently when given minutes. This team's a nightmare to match up against, and they're deep and going to be well-rested come March. Yeah, and another follow-up point to what I said to you about Trimble is this is a Buffalo team that leads the MAC and is in the top of the country, top 10 of the country, in defending the three-point shot. Josh Mbala with the fall away, hits double figures with 10. Bulls are ninth in the country in that category. So, you know, when you can shut down another team's three-point shooting, that changes a lot of the games of what a lot of teams want to do these days. Tip away by Mbala, alley-oop for Graves, doesn't connect. Oh, I tell you what, Akron is going to be thanking their stars. That didn't go down because I'm pretty sure this roof would have exploded with that Buffalo bench. We've already had four or five dunks and a few highlight reel plays, and that one oh. would have been number one on the list had it happened. A little too much juice on the give, I think, from Mbala if he had gotten a little, little more under that. But still, that was another almost ridiculous highlight from jo this UB team. Josh already has four assists in this oh. game. That's not something uh, unnormal either. You and I have noticed it. He's turning into a really good distributor of the ball. Off the feed from Lauren Christian Jackson to his teammate Michael Wynn, a foul is drawn. Going to go on LaQuill Hardnett, his second. Yeah, a little bit of contact there in the paint. Well earned here for Akron. And, you know, you and I always talked about as well something we have found to be the most telling stat for Buffalo, right, is that assist number. How are they distributing the ball? It's another good game so far. 13 assists on 18 made field goals from this Buffalo offense. They are moving it a lot, and it's resulting in good looks. That's double-figure assists for the Bulls in 19 of their 20 games this year. Conversely, Akron with just four assists here today. I think I've learned to appreciate how telling that stat is. You know, I mean, we know a great assist and, and alley-oops, and they lead to great baskets, but 
the bigger picture of how teams are playing, being unselfish, sharing the ball, finding the open player, having the ability to have five guys on the court who can take an assist and convert is big. And that is a much needed conversion from Greg Tribble of the Zips. The 6-1 sophomore out of Cincinnati gets up high above the rim. And Oh, yeah, he took one right on the face and just tosses it in there. That's a, a good bucket for the Zips and maybe try to build off of that. It takes one or two baskets. That's all it takes. Get a little momentum, get a few stops, and see if Akron, who, uh, I mean, as we know, a very, very good team, can sort of crawl their way back into this. Tribble has started the last two games, first two starts of the season, and starting to show everybody why. That's five points for Tribble. The foul was on Harden at his third. He checks out Bertram checks in 17 point Buffalo lead this is such a fun battle watching Sagu and, and Jackson go back and forth well they just like being able to look eye to eye yeah. <laughs> that doesn't happen very often Williams hung in the lane had it knocked away and taken away by Enrique Freeman I'm sure Rondo would quibble with that he is listed at three inches hot taller four inches taller Corner three, and they are just struggling yeah. from distance as Michael Wynn misses. And here goes point guard and ball. Oh, yeah. Oh, pretty. And Brock Bertram with the putback and the foul. And look at the fist pump from the big guy, Brock Bertram. Ooh, boy, I tell you what. I don't know if I want to play Buffalo here in a couple of weeks moving forward in the tournament with the way they're looking. I mean, if it's not one, it's another. This team is so deep. And you got Brock Bertram, the big senior center. Oh! Boy, he created some space for himself, didn't he? A little bit. <laughs> yeah. You saw it on those replays. He There was a two-hander to the back of Trimble Jr. to create some space. I think we've just got a bench warning as well. That Buffalo bench, maybe even both warnings here. A lot of guys standing, a lot of guys fired up after that and one. I mean, take a look at the yeah the, the replay here. The bench was feeling themselves over there. And I think a, a warning was issued, and Coach Weitzel immediately turned around and, and sort of tried to calm him down a little bit. Bertram completes the three-point play, a 20-point Buffalo lead. I did not see this happening. Still plenty of time left for Akron, but... Lauren Christian Jackson double figures now with 10. Yeah, I didn't either. Nice. You know, um, Akron's too good. You know, Akron's been great, although they've been slumping a little bit lately. And, you know, and a lot of times it's how you're going to end your season, not what happened a month and a half ago. And it's been the reverse because Buffalo's been playing its best basketball the last couple of weeks. So we'll take a time out here. Josh Mbala into the lane, hangs and hits off glass. Buffalo up by 18. So both of these teams, a matter of fact, the top eight teams are already locked into the MAC tournament next week in Cleveland. The question is, where is everybody going to fall? That's still to be determined. And somewhat thrown a little confusion today with the Ohio versus Kent game canceled because of COVID issues at Ohio, and nobody knows whether they'll get their last game in or not. So there's still a lot of maneuvering to be done here. Yeah, and a reminder as well, as people look at these, it's winning percentage here, not just total amount of wins. So. You know, if Buffalo goes on to win today to go to 11 and 5, they would leapfrog Kent State, or excuse me, they would leapfrog Akron rather. Uh, and, and it's just a, it's it's cool knowing that Buffalo can hold their own destiny, right, with a win today if they go on to finish this off, and, and another huge opportunity to play Kent State this weekend. Yep, Friday night. And a good putback on the drive by Lauren Christian Jackson, and the follow-up goes in for Freeman. It's impossible to keep up with Christian Jackson. I mean, you can try to, like, call. I would hate to him play-by-play, -play, I think, for Akron. Your voice can barely go as fast as he goes up and down the court. He is just explosively high speed. Graves way outside, shooting it over Lauren Christian Jackson. No good. Rebound ripped down by Wynn. This is Tribble. Gets the screen from Freeman. Creates the opportunity. Rolls off. Rebounded by Bertram. 
Good drive, but lack of finish has been a bit of the story as Akron still at 32% field goal shooting. Sagu bounce pass, Mbala powers up and tipped up and in. As Graves is going to get credited for that one. Nice effort from Javon. And you look at the rebounding total. Remember what Coach Gross told us. It's going to have to be a great rebounding effort from Akron to have this one close. 36 to 19 in favor of Buffalo. Williams off the feed from Graves. Assist number 15 in the game for the Bulls on their 22 made shots. And a timeout taken by Akron there. So Graves with the bounce pass to Williams. The Bulls are having some fun. Scoreboard tells you that too. Well, Matt told you earlier in the game about how the Bulls have been dominating points in the paint lately. Uh, it's continuing today. Yeah, and at that point, I was uh, really actually kind of patting Akron on the back because it was 6-6 six to six in the points in the paint, so the Zips were doing an okay job. Since then, obviously, as you see the number, it has swayed way in favor of the Buffalo Bulls, who just continue to dominate inside the lane, and, and that is such a huge thing for a Buffalo team because it opens up the outside. They're not the best three-point shooting team, but when you're as effective as they are inside the paint, you have to respect that, and that opens up a three-point line for deep shooting. Yeah, and you know, I think the other part of that too, Matt, is th this is a guard-oriented conference, and mm -hmm. there are you, we rattled off some great guards in this conference. There aren't quite as many highly talented big guys, and when you have some that can maneuver in that area, it gives you a nice advantage. That's a tough uh, play to have coming out of a timeout like that. John Gross left just putting his head in his hands here as Imbala swipes it from the grips of uh, Michael Wynn. It's off of Wynn's knees, and I tell you, Akron's just kind of run into a buzzsaw here today. Yeah, they really have. Jonathan Williams, left side of the lane, rolls off. And Wynn with the rebound. Jackson whips it into the corner, and they'll whip it back. He'll step back, he'll shoot, and he cannot hit. It's been a little bit of that kind of day for LCJ. Sweet move, though, that little jab, step back, pull up there. It's, he's a lot of fun to watch. Sagu feeds for Graves. Now the offense will get moving again here. Sagu spins in the lane, shot clock at five. Jonathan Williams will pull up, short on the jumper. And Lauren Christian Jackson kind of yelling a little bit yeah. after at least initiating the contact and the foul, and he'll get to go to the line. It's been a bit of a tough day for him, too. I mean, it's a great take here by, by Jackson to realize Buffalo's just getting back in transition. You take it down their throats right to the basket, and I tell you what, Usually, those types of shots fall for the conference's leading scorer, but struggling from the floor today. But nonetheless, getting a trip to the free throw line. He's doing everything he can to keep Akron in this one. Yep, he's an 88% free throw shooter. Hits the first, got one more. And as you mentioned, 4 of 15 shooting, just 2 of 7 from distance for Lauren Christian Jackson. And a lot of that is the defense of Rondo Segu uh, that's helped make it a little harder on him. Yeah, we'll see who uh, who takes Jackson. Sagu just headed to the bench, as did Mbala, as did Williams. So a couple of fresh legs out there for Coach Weitzel and the Bulls, but we'll see who draws the uh, the short straw of having to guard Jackson. 1,514 career points, seventh on Akron's all-time list for Lauren Christian Jackson in only three years. Remember, he played his first year at Long Beach State, transferred, and sat out a year. Graves kicks it for Fagan. And the guys who helped spark the, the turnaround in the first half, Nickelberry, Fagan, they're both in the ball game. Hardnet backs in, fall away jumper, no good. Tipped out of bounds, it'll stay with the Bulls, but only five on the shot clock. I want to get another look at it. It looks like Akron may have just gone to a zone of some sort, especially with Sagu out. Jackson is going to be severely undersized guarding. Uh, it looks like Nickelberry, he's on, here you go, here's a sub, so Jackson's going to come out. It looked like he had to guard Nickelberry for a moment, so they went to a zone for a second there. We'll see if they stick with it now that Jackson heads to the bench. Quick decisions here for the Bulls on a nice bounce pass. Bertram could not bring it in off the bounce pass from Nickelberry. Hey, 
So with Lauren Christian Jackson not on the court, we'll see where the offense comes from from Akron. A miss on the layup there. They've missed a lot of easy ones today. Nickelberry lets everybody go by him, tried to flip it over the back of his head, could not connect. It'll stay with the Bulls. I liked the hesitation. I thought maybe he could have just gone right up with it. It looks like David maybe made it a little tougher on himself, but nice hesitation move from Nickelberry, patient at the rim, and Buffalo has a chance to set up the offense here. Bounce it in on the low block to Hardnet. Picks up the dribble, feeds it to Graves. Javon creates a little room and hits. 13 in the game for Javon Graves, the senior from outside of Akron, Malvern, Ohio. Who went to high school in Akron. I'm sure he always has a little extra motivation when playing the Zips here. Wanted I would to, think so. Wanted to come out strong. And finally, a three from the corner for Macy Daly. Just the third three-pointer on 18 attempts for Akron. Daly, one of three players that Akron has that has transferred in from a high-profile program. He comes from Iowa. You've got Trimble Jr. from St. John's and Wynn from Wake Forest. Nice give and go between Graves and Bertram. Looked like a nice block by Wynn, but we're going to get a foul before we get the free throws. Javon Graves having himself an afternoon. Well, it's not that we don't love the cutouts, but I think we're all longing for the days when we get real people in the stands. <laughs> the real Steve Means, the real Sierra Dillard, the real Khalil Mack in the stands here. Yeah, of course, fans can go to BullsBWF.com. Help make a donation to help offset some of the money that, of course, uh, Buffalo was not able to make with all these people and fantastic fans not in attendance here today. It's a... Just a problem, you know, it's too bad really all, all the year long. You know, how much good college basketball did fans miss out on? How many programs not able to have all their loyal fans in the building? It's it's too bad. And we want to see Matt, our director, Matt Walfran's real parents in the game That's here, true. not we just do. the cutout yep. variety. Love having Mr. and Mrs. W here in the stands. Brock Bertram has had a nice little game off the bench. Got another chance at a free throw here. And that one will bounce in. Six points for Bertram to go along with four boards. The lead's at 20. It's been as much as 22 in this game. And that's two in a row. Three pointers made by Akron. Michael Wynn drains it. That'll have to be it. I mean, there's still 11 minutes left, and if they start knocking a few of those down, that's, you know, you cut it maybe to 10 or so. And well, that's going to be a turnover by the Bulls. Yeah, this, if they can go on a little bit of a run these next three or four minutes here, that'll be important. And I think Coach Weitzel immediately turns to the bench and sends Rondo and Josh to check back in. But not a lot of movement there for Win. He just decides, hey, you know what? Sure, three points are worth more than two. 10th three-pointer of the year, the transfer from Wake Forest. You mentioned one of those guys that we got a, uh, it's we got a mic. Looks like maybe the our crew's uh -oh. effects mic uh -oh, there. Uh-oh, see? Oh, yeah. come on. We're going to do we're doing a mop? <laughs> That's valuable audio equipment. Be careful there. I'm sure our producers and everyone in the back's holding their breath. Hey, that was actually a pretty nice job there. Nice touch. That was. That was, it up. that was well done by Michael Griffith, one of our officials slash audio technicians. 10.57 to go in this one. Comfortable lead at the moment for the Bulls, who are looking to grab their fourth win in a row. And as Matt mentioned, move up to number three ahead of Akron in yep. the standings. And that, see, now we got to bring the pros out. Yeah, here comes Jim out from the back here with a ladder to do a little housekeeping with this mic. Geico's going to get some free ads. Well, you know what? It's a weird game. It's wacky and, and really... Now he's getting... Now, normally he gets tucked in the behind the stands where he can't <laughs> see anything. Now he's getting some prime air time here. Good job. What a weird game, you know? Yeah, it was weird. Remember, we remember, it started off ugly. Neither team could find itself. Bulls started shooting two of their first 16, and 
you know, but but again, even though they were struggling, Akron did not take advantage of that. It was never more than a four or five point lead for the Zips, and then when Buffalo found its range, then then they were able to build the, the big lead that they had as, as much as 18 in the first half. Yeah, Akron's largest lead, I think that's a really good point you make. When Buffalo's struggling, their largest lead was still just five. And that's a nice steal by Lauren Christian Jackson. He anticipated the pass. He glides in and scores. Okay. A couple more stops here if you're an Akron fan. Try to string them together. Plenty of time. And there's a takeaway. There Turnover go. by the Bulls. Got to have one here. Jackson mismatch guarded by Fagan. He goes around him. He floats it. It won't fall, but an offensive board. And another chance, long three, that will not go, and it's Mbala with the tip to hard net. Trimble missed that three. Right guy shooting it, just off the mark a little bit. And no foul called, Nickelberry can't believe it, but it's a takeaway by the Zips. And a quick move to the hoop by Garvin. Clark will draw a foul. The look on Nickelberry's face was astonishment on this one. Well, let's see. Did he have a case? Kind of jukes left, right. He gets hit in the chest. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think there's a case there. I think there's a case to be made. I, it, on the first contact, no, because that <laughs> happens a lot. We see that. I think the but second get contact kind of was... Get run into midair and yeah, hit the side the, of the head. But the yeah. second kind. And, and then to make it worse, he gets the foul on the other end. I his think second. Coach Weitzel has slowly started putting his starters back in. Hardnett and Nabala came in at the last stoppage of play. He saw three straight empty possessions and immediately turned around to the bench and started pointing. He points at Javon and points at Jonathan. Here's the starting five on the court now for Buffalo. Garvin Clark made the first. And he makes the second. Freshman from Euclid, Ohio. Played at Cleveland Heights High School, coached by a player that you're going to know well as a St. Bonaventure grad. J.R. Bremer was his high school mm -hmm. coach. Oh. Talk about great buck St. Bonaventure player. Oh, yeah. Bremer was a, just a, an absolute hooper. And there's a hooper on the other end. Jonathan Williams kind of ends this little mini 7-0 Akron yep. run with a three. That's a huge shot. You could see Akron's bench. They were all standing up. They wanted a stop. I mean, heck, if they get a stop in a bucket like that, they could have cut it to, to nearly a 10-point game. But... Well, it's a 12-point game right now. What I say, get it to 10 at the under-8 media. If you can get it to 10 at the under-8 media, Akron's feeling okay. The lead was as big as 22 in this half for the Bulls. Graves down the left side of the lane, has it blocked. No foul called, and a takeaway for the Zips. Here comes Akron. Jackson trying to oh. find room. Great blind pass. Just couldn't quite connect with Cameron Reese. Wow. We're going to need to see that one again. Yeah, that was crazy good out of Christian Jackson. Look at this. He's got two bodies on him and just perfectly in stride. I mean, that is not easy. Cameron Reese is coming on full head of steam downhill right into his hands and unfortunately not able to finish. And that's blocked by Imbala. Triggers the break for the Bulls. Sagu to the hoop and draws the foul. Yeah, good block by Imbala on the other end. Good run out here. You'll see one more time. And I think that was clean, too. I always like seeing a double look at these. Yep, he gets it before. Of course, it hits the glass. Harden had a great outlet pass to Sagu, and Rondo just takes it right to Trimble Jr. to earn himself a trip to the free throw line. Fourth foul on Brian Trimble Jr. It has been a tough day for him. Zero of seven shooting, no points, and now four fouls and a seat on the bench for the junior from Kansas City. Yeah, and, and that's a, a, a player in Trimble Jr. that's second in the MAC in three-point field goals a game. He averages nearly four threes a game. So that's a huge hit to an Akron offense when you've got one of the more consistent three-point shooters and he goes over. And he's coming off a game where he had only six points in their loss to Bowling Green. So, again, it's been a couple of games of struggling for Brian, but you can see how important he is mm -hmm. to Akron's offense as a, that second scoring threat. Jackson down the lane. I don't know how he got that ball off. But he did, and he almost got his rebound back, and Sagu pulls it in instead. He is so magical with the basketball. Lauren Christian Jackson. And Sagu gets fouled on the basket. They will not count that. 
He wanted the end one. Oh, him, yeah. and, him and Jackson have been going back and forth a little bit. It's been fun. I mean, neither of them having huge games, but I just meant the defensive battles you're seeing here. Neither of them giving up any space, and Rondo wanted that and one. Fifth foul on Akron, so no free throws yet for the Bulls. So you having a little trouble getting it in. Finally does to Graves. A little under eight and a half to go in this one. Buffalo up 16. Down low, Mbala creates his own space. Had it blocked from behind, gets his rebound back. Had it blocked again. Enrique Freeman just battling down there, and finally we get a foul. That is one strong man in Josh Mbala. He is so, so strong with the basketball in his hands. I mean, you got two or three Zips uniforms around him here. Misses it, wrestles it away, and goes up strong again. And that's just powerful, strong hands out of Mbala. Third foul on Enrique Freeman. And Mbala hits the free throw. 11 points for Josh to go along with eight rebounds and four assists. So we're here some of the players discussing who they've got. That's that's one positive we've had, I guess, if there's any of not having as many fans in here as you get to hear some of the dialogue. Saved by the boat by the Bulls right to Akron. Garvin Clark to the hoop can't finish, but the putback goes in for Freeman. Yeah, it is a little bit of the only benefits of not having fans in the buildings is you do hear a little bit of stuff you don't normally hear, sometimes to the detriment of uh, coaches who tend to have a expanded vocabulary. Yeah, that's <laughs> it's we downside. Get, we get a foul called on the Bulls on Rondo Sagoob. We're going to take a break. Buffalo by 15, 7.42 to go. Tuesday afternoon action here on ESPN3. Well, the Zips are a team that relies a lot on three-point shooting, and when it's not falling, you get a sense why they've lost two in a row and maybe looking at three in a row. These are their three-point stats, Matt, from the last three games. And it's especially tough when you've been struggling and you're trying to get back on track and you run into the number one three-point defensive team in the conference. Ninth in America is Buffalo at defending the three-point line. So that's a tough draw for Akron when you're trying to get your three-point shooting jump started and you run into a defense like this. Yeah, they're only four of 20 shooting threes here this afternoon. And that's a long three for Lauren Christian Jackson that won't go. Battle in front of the Akron bench, still loose, finally regained by the Zips. Get it to Lauren Christian Jackson again. He'll pass up the long three, feed it into the corner. And that one will count on the drive to the hoop by Michael Dawson. And one. All right, Akron's hanging tough here as you see Jackson penetrate down the baseline. It's a nice kick. Head fake. Williams was set and waiting, but that was a nice adjustment midair by Dawson. Again, it has to be through the chest area for it to be a charge. When you clip a shoulder like that, it's going to get called as a block. So a chance at a three-point play here for the sophomore Michael Dawson, and he gets it. Seven points for him. And the lead is down to 12. Graves kicks it. Sagu head and shoulder fake. Pull up from 15. Good. And every time Akron starts to put some pressure, Buffalo figures out how to answer. And that's a nice dunk off the feed to Enrique Freeman. And that last bucket was an assist from Javon Graves. He was dangerously close to a triple-double uh, earlier this season against Mercyhurst where he was one assist shy. He has gotten there in assists. He's got 13 points. He's one rebound away from a triple-double. Yep, career high in assists for Javon Graves with 10. That shot was blocked by Freeman. So everyone can, can now watch for that. Oh, it looks like maybe the stats were just updated. He may be too shy. I don't know if they reassessed what the rebound went to, but... We'll be keeping you updated. C.J. Massenberg, the last bull to have a triple-double. And Enrique Freeman cuts it to a 10-point lead and a timeout. 
look now. Don't look now is right. 6-11 to go, and it's down to a 10-point lead, as close as it's been since about five minutes to go in the first half. Watch the block by Enrique Freeman here on Josh and Bala. Seven blocks in the game for Akron. Yeah, and Freeman is number one in the MAC in block shots, and there's a good reason why. A good denial at one end, gets back down on the other end, and another bucket for Freeman, who's now into double figures, and shooting at 75%. That is number one in the MAC. Look, Will Harden, it doesn't have enough shots to be counted in that category, so coming into today's game, Freeman just unbelievable. He's making three out of every four shots. And he's still averaging eight points a game. As I said, there's a minimum to that. It's not like he's, you know, shooting three of four, and we're going to call it 75%. He's taking nearly 90 shots. Well, one interesting stat that jumped out at me, we're a little bit away from it happening yet, but the, the Zips are seven and six when trailing at the half this season, which mean, which is a lot more wins than most teams yeah. have when they trail at the half. So they're a team that will fight to the end and give you a good second half, and we're seeing that now. Graves, cross court, Williams, up, hangs, can't hit. Freeman with a rebound. Chance to cut it to seven for the Zips. Free, uh, Jackson right to the rim, Man. he'll cut it to eight. All righty, buckle up. Now Akron's bench is into it all of a sudden. Buffalo's bench likes it too, though. It's a little bit of jaw in here. They're getting up out of their feet. Keyshawn Bruton just went and pulled away every chair possible, so no one on the Buffalo bench is allowed to sit at this moment. Good call, good move. Sagu, head and shoulder fake, three-pointer comes up short, rebounded by the Zips, pulled in by Daly. Just over five minutes to go. Buffalo led by 22 earlier in this half. Daly had it knocked away and taken away by the Bulls off the missed shot. Feed for Jonathan Williams, layup, good! Oh, that's a big bucket for Buffalo. The Zips had all sorts of momentum. UB gets the stop. And the star, Jonathan Williams, on a nice dish from his best friend, Rondo Segu. Too tough to stop when you've got a head of steam like that coming from Williams and as long and as big of a jumps as he has. That is just too, too tough on the defensive end. And credit to Josh and Bala for playing good defense on yep. Macy Daly's drive to the rim there, grabbing the rebound and then kicking it out to create the opportunity that Williams has a chance to finish off right here and does. 13 for Jonathan Williams. How about the free throws here today as well? Akron, one of the better free throw shooting teams at 75%. Buffalo struggles in that category at 67%, but today UB is 13 of 15 and Akron's 11 of 12. Look at those numbers. Back up to a double digit lead for the Bulls with under five minutes to go. And Williams gets a piece of that one, knocks it out on Garvin Clark. A lot of blocks today on both ends, more so for Akron, but it's a tough block there. The natural lefty, Williams, says 12, no thanks. Yeah, 12 shot back. blocks in a this lot. game. Loop it in. And a missed dribble as Wynn loses it. Here comes Graves. Graves for Segu. Layup. Good. That's a headsy play from Segu. That ball was going to get sent away by the next best blocker and Freeman. Instead, he glides across the paint and changes it into a reverse layup, essentially making it impossible for Freeman to block. 11th assist of the game for Javon Graves. Jackson, floater, no good, tapped up and in. Oh, no. And we have an injured player, and that's yep. Rondo Segu. Maybe looks like he's okay. Hopefully just banged up a little bit. And you can see him struggling, and trainer Andy Blizz will come out and take a look. He's coming out to defend the three. Oh, yeah, it's kind of... Oh, yeah. Boy, oh that's awkward. I can't... Was it the left or the right? Because he took a funny step with the left. I think it's his right. Just the only reason I say that is because when he was hopping away, it looked like he was using that left to hop. And he looks like he wants to come right back into the game, so... Yeah, Andy Blizz was begging him not to run away. He was looking like he was trying to run it off quick, and Blizz was like, hang on, Rondo. Yeah, he's just trying to hop it off. Segu's had a nice game. Ten points, three rebounds, two assists, but his defense on Lauren Christian Jackson has been outstanding. Yep. 
Can't, uh, can't say what a good job he's doing. Good break of the press by the Bulls. Imbala feeds for Fagan, and he'll pull it out. Run some clock with just over four minutes to go. Javon Graves, two rebounds away from a triple-double. Step back three, Graves, no good. And Imbala is going to get called. I think they're going to get Imbala on this one, are they? Somebody had Imbala's arm. From up here, it looked like Imbala was getting grabbed. I'll have to take another look at it when we get back here. Nope, it's on Trimble Jr., and it'll be his fifth foul. We'll take a timeout first, our final media timeout. Under four to go, Buffalo up by 11. Well, here's the play of that last play where the foul was called. Watch Imbala in the middle there. All right, he's getting pulled. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that was pretty. I wasn't, you know, at, at first glance, I wasn't sure whether they might have called him for sort of holding off, but instead it was Trimble Jr. who gets the fifth foul, and a tough day for Brian Trimble Jr. He yeah. fouls out with uh, zero points in this game on 0 of 7 shooting. Rondo Segu seems to be okay. Yeah, it was just sort of an sign. awkward land. He stretched it out with Andy Bliz and has checked back in as... We're still on triple-double watch with Javon Graves. Still needs two boards. All right, good Bulls fans. It, we're not there yet, but there have been uh, two, only two triple-doubles in UB Men's Basketball Division I history. I already told you who had the last one, who mm -hmm. has the other one. Think about that. We'll get you the answer, hopefully, when Javon gets his and becomes the third. But if not, we'll get it to you anyway. Chance to become the 19th player this season to get a triple-double. Fans know, Mac fans know, Jay Preston He's fun achieved to watch, one. Too. He is a blast. He's just another one in the long list of guards. I mean, it's unbelievable. And the Bulls the did a great job yep. on him over the weekend. Yes, they did. And, and again, that's you played two outstanding guards in a row, and you you didn't let them take the game over. I mean, Jay Preston and, and Lauren Christian Jackson are, are, are top of the best as you get, cream of the crop. I mean, they'll play anywhere in America. Here's Jackson, this time guarded by Graves. Drive down the lane and a pretty reverse layup by Michael Wynn. Tough take, now 11 points for Wynn. He averages only a little over four points and he started his career at Wake Forest. So now you're starting to get a glimpse of why an ACC school brought him in. That is a tough basket. Into the lane for Josh Mbala and he will draw the foul. That's gonna be a blocking foul called on Michael Dawson. Take one more look at this one from Wynn. And you've got Josh Mbala on your hip. And just the English to touch it off the window. Nice take. Christian Brothers Academy, a couple of years of high school in Albany, New York. Just a couple hours, five, four, five hours down the throughway from here. is Michael Wynn's hometown. Josh Mbala, 73% shooter. His hometown a little farther away than Albany. That would be Bordeaux, <laughs> France. I don't think Easy pass there. will not get you there. I don't think you can get there on the throughway. No. Jackson into the lane. I love how he cups the basketball to create the space, and he puts it in for point seventeen and 18. It's so, so fun to watch. I mean, at five foot eight, it is just incredible how effective he is at going to the basket. Lead is down to eight at this point with 2.49 to go. Got to start on this end of the court for Akron, though. They're running out of time. They can't keep trading baskets. Sagu tried to feed Graves on the cut. Can't connect, and it's taken away by the Zips. There you go. Big possession here for the Zips. The freshman guard, Clark, brings it into the front court. Makes a move, drives down. Whips it around, three-pointer from the corner. Oh, it was halfway down, and it comes out for Michael Dawson. But another chance for the Zips with just over two minutes to go. I don't know how that didn't fall. Pull up three. Lauren Christian Jackson side rim out of bounds to the Bulls. And with 2.08 to go, a lot can happen. But if that one had fallen we'd have a little different conversation. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's again here. Buffalo, uh, they're a, a smart team, well-coached team. They know darn well that they can't put up anything here that's too quick in the shot clock and bad takes. They need to kill some time down, get a good look. Mbala down the lane, spins, kicks. Hardnet, wide open three, in and out. Graves got oh, rebound number hurts. nine. Yep. 
Graves up and it rolls off. And here come the Zips, they get a break. Clark on Sagu, he goes up and it's no good and they're gonna count it. Offensive, they're gonna call goaltending. Yeah, let's see, I'm not sure. Buffalo doesn't seem to think they touched it. I mean, of course, no team's gonna admit it, but let's see for yourself here. I think we're watching Javon here, number three. I don't think he touched yeah, that, to be I honest with you. Yeah, I don't think he did either. Easy to watch the basket, right? The ball, rather. Yeah. And they're going to go look at it. Yeah, it's under two. Bill Elk, Greg Lansdorf, Michael Griffith, our officials, under two. So we're going to take a look at it. Watch the spin of the ball. If the spin of the ball changes, then it was touched. It does not. I, I don't think it That's does. That's a great point on your part. That's how you'll be able to yeah. tell. You just watch it. Anything alter on the ball there. And again, I don't think he ever got it. So we'll see if the officials agree. And remember, the call on the court was a, an offensive goaltend. So just like uh, you know, football fans out there, it has to be 100% positive to overturn it like this, or else they'll just stick with the call on the court. So right now we sit at 73-67 with a minute 38 to go. Yeah, a lot happening here down the last couple of minutes. I mean, we're one rebound away from a triple-double. We've got a really pivotal moment here in this game, and we'll get one more look from Graves, and I just don't see that Nike logo ever really change its course. So I don't envy being an official nope. right about now. So That's a tough call. Yeah, right now, Bill Elk and Greg Lansdorf, those are the two guys at the monitor right now trying to look things over. And remember, your scoreboard is as if that did count. So if it does not count, all of a sudden, that's a big basket because it goes back to an eight-point ball game. Right. Three possessions, more importantly. Yes, the score reflects that being a basket yep. on goaltending. Again, watch the stripes on the basketball, as Matt pointed out. You know, there's the natural rotation of the yeah. ball, but it doesn't change on the axis, the X, Y axis. I'm I'm the worst possible <laughs> ge geometry algebra <laughs> calculus guy to be talking about it. But no, it, it's and and the other thing is too. Of course, as I said, no player is going to admit that they offensive goaltended, but sometimes reactions are pretty telling. And Javon Graves immediately was like, "No, no, 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 I didn't touch that." And we'll see. I mean, they're spending an awful long time at it, which means that I'm, I'm assuming they're thinking about overturning this. Yeah, the old rule is the longer they watch it, the more there's a chance it gets overturned, yep. and then they have to reset the score and everything. You're getting a look at Javon Graves, and you see his afternoon, 13 points, 9 rebounds, the 11 assists are a new career high, and he's one away from a triple-double. So in case you're hanging on the answer there, Shannon Evans is the only other Bull to have a triple-double in the Division I era. He and C.J. Massenburg are the only two. I don't know if I would have come up with that off the top of my head, but now that you say it, it's one of those, oh, duh. It's like, come on, Shannon Evans was a hooper. Yep, yes, he was. <laughs> this is funny. You got Akron telling telling the, the referees it should count. You got Buffalo's bench over here waving it off, saying, no, I don't think so. Yeah, both teams are... Voicing right. their opinions. I think we have a decision. Let's watch Coach Gross's reaction here. He's asking for a prolonged uh, speech, so we'll see. I think they're gonna count. I think it's gonna count as two. I think wow. it's gonna stay on the board. Yeah. Again, you know, full transparency. I didn't think Graves touched it, but as I pointed out about a minute ago, it, they have to be a hundred percent positive because the call on the court was a good basket. So the basket will hold, it will count on goaltending, so it's a six-point game with a minute 38 to go. Full court pressure, trap in the corner, Sagu, hard net, Graves now, and a chance to break the press. Almost had it there. They had Rondo trapped dead to rights. And Sagu will hold, guarded by Jackson. Shot clock under 10 now. Graves off the screen. Looking to kick it back. Shot clock at go. three, at two. Long three by Sagu. Almost went in. And Graves almost had the rebound for the triple-double. And what do we got? A scrum. A held ball, maybe. Yeah, okay. Jump ball. Yeah. Buffalo. Buffalo. That's big, too, because you get a fresh 20 now. So and not they, only. And Graves gets credit for a rebound, so there's your triple-double. Good for Javon Graves. He was one off of it earlier this season when Mercyhurst came into the arena. And he's just got the 
perfect game for it, doesn't he? I mean, he's just, he does everything so well. He averages nearly six rebounds a game. But it's that assist number that impresses me, 11. That's yep. a bunch. So a big break for the Bulls. They reset on the shot clock at 20. Clock under a minute now to go, and now Akron Ooh. will have to foul, and that's not the guy you wanted to foul, no. the 83% free throw shooter. I don't know. What do you think there? A minute left? You're down early. two possessions. Yeah, I thought a little you early. You try to get a stop before putting a, a mid-80% free throw shooter on the line? I, I would have let that one yeah. play out. Yeah. It's only 20 on the shot clock. So the worst that you're going to get the ball back off a of miss is in the 40s, low, high 30s. Seconds left to go. Well, we'll see. Sagu hits the first free throw. I can't five even, of five uh, in the game. Excuse me. I, I was just saying I can't even presume to, to try to act like I... And nearly the coaching mind that, of course, John Gross is. And well, he misses the second. His first miss of the day. Seven-point lead. Lauren Christian Jackson down the lane. Has it blocked. Graves adds another stat to his list. Let's see here. Lauren Christian Jackson. That's smart. Go right to the basket. Don't take a bad shot at the three-point line. He's trying to get to the free throw line where he is excellent. Nearly 90%. But he has just not consistently got that call from the officials today. Only, quote-unquote, 18 points for Lauren Christian Jackson in this game. He averages over 21 as the max leading scorer. And just two free throws. Think of how many times he's been in the paint there getting contact. And he's only been to the free throw line once. And they get the ball to him now. Look at him in the battle between him and Sagu. Jackson will feed it off now. Daly tried to blind bounce pass, and that's a turnover, and that's a tough break for Akron. I think one too many passes there. Daly could have gone up with that, taking it right to the rim. One too many, forced it. So now with 36.2 seconds to go, Buffalo with a possession. We get a timeout called. By the officials, I believe. Yes. I think they want to take a look at that. Who Under two it? minutes, yep. They can go back to the monitor in situations like this. It, well, it did break its way through a crowd of players, yep. so there's that a chance that a random foot or hand or something might have touched it. All right, let's see here. Let me try to redeem myself. I feel like a... Uh, you know, they bring in the, the old ex-officials here on the NFL broadcasts and they give their best <laughs> best choice here. I don't think it touched anybody. I don't either. Heck, I was wrong the first time. Let's see here one more time. Does it touch Mbala? No. So, yeah. And, I, and again, it's the same situation where they called the Buffalo ball. So, you know, they're probably just going to stick with it. But, heck. Well, what a wild afternoon as we get a chance to reset. Remember, both teams came out horribly shooting. Buffalo hit just two of their first 16 shots, and then they go on a 21-4 run to kind of take control of this game, and they go into the half up by 14. That lead was built to 22. Mm -hmm. uh, early, well, not even early, 12 minutes to go, Buffalo had its biggest lead at 22, but then Akron starts to chip back a little bit. Buffalo gets a little bit cold, and now we've seen the lead get down to, what, six? Was, was yeah, it was just at six a moment ago, two possessions right before the Sagu free throw. It's a little 6-1 run right now for Akron, but with just 36 seconds left, that last empty possession there hurt. Final game of the regular season for the Bulls comes up on Friday. You'll see it on ESPNU, a 6 o'clock tip-off with the Kent State Golden Flashes. Buffalo trying to avenge an earlier loss in Kent, Ohio this season to the Golden Flashes. And again, as we showed you in those max standings, a pivotal game for seeding as Buffalo has a chance to get all the way up to second in mm -hmm. the seeding. If they win this game today and they win against Kent State, they'll grab the number two seed. Right, because Kent State's not playing today, as you said earlier, due to that COVID-19 uh, postponement, which eventually turned into a cancellation. So they're 12-5 and five right now. Buffalo's at 10-5. and five. They win today. They go to 11-5. and five. They beat Kent. They go to 12-5 and five and goes to winning percentage. Kent State would fall to 12-6, and six and yep. Buffalo would leapfrog all the way up to the 2, which so, is pretty remarkable. So this is what everybody is, the officials are looking at to see whether Macy Daly's pass goes through everybody without touch. It doesn't touch Hartnett at all, does it? If not from that angle, again, it could have for all we know. I mean, that angle does not show anything. I don't know if they've got another view that we don't, but, uh, you know, I think I learned my lesson the first time. This is one of those things where there's just not enough to overturn it. Yeah, you know, as you can see, it went its way through about four different players, and it didn't appear to hit either Hardnet or Mbala on the Buffalo side, which would be what you'd be needing, need to look for to change the call. If that's the only angle they have, I'd be shocked if they overturn it, unless there's something we're not seeing. 
All right. We're going to take we a look at another one for you. Yeah, let's see. This might give you your best look on if it touches hard net or not. Yeah, it's a little tough to see there. It actually has got know. a better look on whether it touches Mbala, and it doesn't appear to. I think they just said it was Akron Ball. Wow. Yeah. How about that? I, so, I don't know what they saw. So both of those calls, not necessarily what we felt like we saw, but hey, I, we I don't get what, to make the decision. Yeah, I know how people are feeling, too. I love sitting on my couch at home and yelling at the broadcasters when they're wrong, so I'm sure we've got some Akron <laughs> fans yelling at their TVs. But So I got to think they must have I, – I don't know whether it hit Hardnet or know. Ibala. I didn't uh, see it. You know, one of those two, what, what prompted the – change there, but it's going to be Akron Ball now with a seven-point game. 36.8 to go. You got Lauren Christian Jackson in the corner there. Let's see who's going to inbound for Akron. It'll be Daly. Out of length there, six foot seven, so he can go up and over Williams if need be. And then Segu is going to trail Lauren Christian Jackson. A little trouble getting it in. They do. Jackson finds an opening oh and boy. hits! That was an excellent inbounds play run. Watch the Lauren Christian Jackson faked like he was going to go to the top of the key. Watch this one more time. He comes and uses two ball screens. Hard net does not slip the ball screen and Rondo Segu got run through two ball screens and couldn't quite catch up. Uh, you know, Laquille Hardnett, of course, it's, it's tough in the moment, of the, the, the heat of the moment like that, but you got to be aware of where Lauren Christian Jackson is. It's that's a tough call to not slip a screen and try to deny a shot on him. He is, and he is so quick. You you just saw a blur come into your screen on that replay from the top of the key to come back to that corner spot, and then he hits the three as you would expect that he would, and that's your Mac reigning player of the year and a good chance at doing it two years in a row. Watch, watch the cut back. Yep. So he made it all the way to the top of the key before turning around, and as Paul said, just sprinting to that baseline spot. And in the, the thick of things there, he used two ball screens to lose Sagu. Hardnet does not slip one of the screens to get in front of him, and that's your player of the year right there, knocking down a three. It's like death taxes, and Jackson scoring 21 points. Yeah, you bet. Tell you. So he's right there at his average. So it's a four-point Buffalo lead, 34.7 to go. Akron is out of timeouts. Buffalo has two. And all of a sudden, it looked like throughout most of this second half when Buffalo was up big that this was going to be kind of a cruise home to a victory game, but Akron has not let it happen. And it's not necessarily because they're, they're shooting. They're not. They're only three of ten shooting three-pointers in the second half. It's just been good, solid play by the Zips, creating some opportunities and some turnovers. And off the press, they get it into Sagu. Sagu breaks it, gets across half court. They're trying to foul him, and finally they knock him down and get the foul call on Michael Wynn. Wynn was trying to foul him from all the way yeah, back. He was. The, he was trying to foul him for about 45 feet there. And Sagu was doing everything he could not to pass the ball. As I said earlier, Buffalo just a 67% free throw shooting team. Sagu is far and away their best free throw shooter. He oh. did. He did miss his last one, as we mentioned, five of six in the game. But that's the guy you want to have at the line. Yeah, no doubt. 83% free throw shooter. Nobody uh, that plays any meaningful minutes is even over 75. So that's definitely the best free throw shooter option for Buffalo. And he hits the first. Hits this one. It's a two-possession game. Right. Well, that's what's important there, that big three-pointer from Jackson here, even with the both makes here. Akron can keep it to a two-possession ball game. And that's where we're at, 76-70. So quickly, Clark into the front court looking for Jackson. Has it knocked away on contact from Sagu? That shots. That's one and one. And it will be a foul call. You're right. Yep. Sagu's going to get it, and that's going to send the six-foot freshman who averages two points a game, Clark Garvin. And what I would guess, and I haven't watched every single Akron game, but I would guess these are some of the biggest free throws of his young career. Yep. Freshman from Euclid, Ohio, Garvin Clark with eight points in this game and about as much playing time as he's had in a while. 63% free throw shooter, not a huge sample size, but he is two for two today and ice. Tell you what, though, that's not the worst case scenario. I mean, you, you don't ever, you know, obviously an empty possession would have been best case, but at least Buffalo prevents this from getting down to a one possession ball game with just a total of two points being up for grabs here. 
Both free throws are good. A new career high for Garvin Clark at 10 points. Lead down to four. And again, pressure coming from the Zips. Get it into Sagu again. Still no foul call. Sagu gets it across half court to Imbala. Pump fake, slam, and that should do it. Wow. This team is fired up, and Josh Mbala puts an exclamation point on an awesome afternoon game here in Western New York. But look at that, the hesitation move, and whew. wow. Josh let him know it. You know, and I think we, we were clear that the officials were going to let some contact happen oh. as opposed to the immediate call there. We just got double text. Michael Wynn and Josh Mbala both just got called for a technical foul here. Yep, so a double tech. Mbala, Mbala as I said, Mbala was letting him hear it. He, he did not shy away from that and one dunk, and him and Wynn had just been exchanging some more words here while they're lined up at the free throw line. All right, so it's still going to be a free throw here for Mbala to complete the three-point play. Yep. And he does, 15 in the game for Mbala. Lauren Christian Jackson pulls up, short on the three. Graves had it briefly and let it go out of bounds and it will stay with the Zips with 10.1 to go. Triple-double today for Javon Graves. Kind of lost in everything that's gone on here the last couple of minutes. Now they're going to go back to the monitor here. I think it's... Why not? A, you know what? I, I'm not even going to say anything during this this little thing here. On my guess on who it's off of last. Uh, you know, importantly for Buffalo, there's just 10 seconds left. So I don't think one way or the other this this call is going to be too monumental to the outcome of the game. But all right, so Bill Elk and Greg Lansdorf, that was a quick one. Yeah. Okay. So it sticks sticks Seems with Akron. Yeah, yep. it, it, the finger. For what it's worth, I agreed with that one. Yep. I would have said, <laughs> if given the opportunity that it was, it was off of Javon there. Just no fouls here if you're Buffalo. 10.1 seconds. Let that clock keep ticking down. Don't let them get to the free throw line. And if you're Akron, uh, you know, obviously I'm looking for Jackson first. And so he's in that same starting yes, spot again off the last play, and he faked to the middle, and he comes back, and he fakes, and he gets it again, and he shoots it again, and he hits it again. Well, Sagu didn't even try to contest that because he didn't want any foul opportunity there, so he cuts it to a four-point game, but again, with just seven seconds left here, it's and the time is not on the side of the Zips. They're fighting both Buffalo just and the Just watch Jackson. Look at him move yep. back up come forward and you're right Sagu didn't stay in his hip pocket he just because he didn't have to yep pulled his hands down didn't want to risk an and one foul or putting him to the free throw line make Jackson hit the shot you know you've got a two possession three possession lead and that's a smart play by Sagu and whether he knew to do it without or whether it was coached to do it that way either way that's a good smart play by Rondo Sagu and that's an illustration of what a good, smart player he is. Yep. That's both teams got done what I said. You know, no fouls and quick three from Jackson. One of two free throws. Final seconds here. Jackson will try it again. And he'll hit it again with .3 seconds left. And it's going to wind up a 27-point day for Lauren Christian Jackson. But it's going to wind up in a Buffalo win by a lot closer than any of us thought it would be. It's going to go in the books as a two-point win, but Matt, th this game was all over the place. It really was. I, I mean, it started with an absolute track meet pace-wise, right? No one was making shots. They were running up and down the court trying to get the feel of the game, I think. And then things settled in a little bit. Buffalo's offense was really, really hot. I, I, you know, we mentioned that a few times. They were crushing Akron on the glass, but... Look, the Akron Zips, as we said all game long, they're too darn good to stay down like that for too long. 
Great comeback there from Akron, led by Lauren Christian Jackson, all the way back to a one-possession ball game. But Pretty amazing. Yeah, it really was. It was a 22-point lead at one point, 12 minutes to go in this game for Buffalo, and they clearly looked in control. But this game goes back to that first half, that run in the middle part of the first half that put the Bulls to the point where they could relax a little bit. Yeah. And then, obviously, we you know Akron was in major catch-up mode the whole day. Bottom line in all this, four wins in a row now for Buffalo, all of them with 80 points scored or more. They've got their offense going. They're the nation's number one rebounding team and a lot of that was on display here today including a triple double just the third in UB history from Javon Graves boy the stars were shining today we had ourselves one heck of an afternoon that results in Buffalo's 80 to 78 victory in their second to last regular season game of the year for our great crew in Buffalo and for Matt Mattia my name is Paul Peck have yourself a great afternoon this fun day of basketball has been brought to you by ESPN and the Mid-American Conference.